Tovaquan, Coralinol, Minrex, Flarinaf, Dampen. I should know them like the back of my hand. For the Brzezzi family in Brooklyn, it's become a weekly ritual. An assembly line on the kitchen table, dividing up pills and supplements for 14-year-old Julia. I take 70 pills a day. It's necessary, her doctor says, because Lyme disease and infections caused by it are ravaging her body. So bad, she's unable to walk. Lyme is known as the great imitator. It can look like lupus. It can look like rheumatoid arthritis. It can look like multiple sclerosis. It can cause psychiatric symptoms. It's a view that made Dr. Richard Horowitz a hero to thousands of patients and a renegade in the medical world. The Hudson Valley internist is a renowned proponent of what's commonly called chronic Lyme, that bacteria from infected tick bites can hide inside the body, even go dormant and wreak havoc months or years later. People call us crazy, you know, and people call me crazy. Julia's nightmare began two years ago, seemingly out of nowhere. I was a dancer, you know, I was a sports player, I was active, and then, you know, suddenly, in like a second, my life just changed. In class one day, her legs went numb, followed by fevers, joint pain, exhaustion, and hair loss. I must have brought Julia to at least 60, 70 different specialists and doctors. From the looks of her, she was losing her life. Lyme disease was suspected since Julia once had a bullseye rash, often a red flag. But doctors had dismissed it then, and now blood tests were negative. There was no explanation for her condition. These doctors were calling it psychological. They were saying she was faking it. They tried to convince me that I was making it up. I realized that the only shot that Julia had was me. Convinced that Julia had chronic Lyme, her father decided to fight back, only to find himself right in the middle of a mind-boggling medical war. On one side, doctors like Horowitz, who believe in chronic Lyme and say it can be hard to diagnose and to treat. And on the other side, the Centers for Disease Control and much of the medical establishment, including doctors like Gary Wormser. There's a lot of misinformation out there about Lyme disease. Recently, in the American Journal of Medicine, he equated some of the chronic Lyme conversation to fake news. In terms of the patients I see referred to me for uh, chronic Lyme, I, a lot of the patients I see don't have any evidence of ever having had Lyme. Wormser is chief of infectious diseases at New York Medical College. He never treated Julia, but he influenced many who did. Wormser was a lead author of Lyme treatment guidelines, followed by the CDC. They say it's fairly easy to diagnose, and most patients can be cured in 10 to 28 days with antibiotics. Maybe coming a little closer. David Benson, a father in Morris County, New Jersey, could be a case study. And I tested positive back in April. Fatigue and a bad rash were among his symptoms. I did 30 days of antibiotics, and I was, I was feeling pretty good after that. He does have a few lingering problems, which the CDC calls post-Lyme disease syndrome. But for people like Julia, who never tested positive, the official line is that she has a different or new illness. Either we have no explanation or they have another illness. The medical system essentially is broken. At the heart of the Lyme war is a disagreement over blood tests approved by the FDA to detect Lyme. If you've been sick for months and months, the laboratory test should be positive. The science is there. The science is there that the testing is unreliable. The government says the tests are reliable, but the accuracy depends upon the stage of the disease and often don't detect Lyme until four weeks after an infected tick bite. To Julia's father, that sounded like mad science. My only one goal was to get Julia treatment. He found it with a Lyme specialist who used different blood tests that found Julia was positive for Lyme and for four other tick-borne diseases. And on the first week of treatment, you know, I got my upper body back. I was able to feel my toes. But with that step forward, the Brzezis hit new minefields. I couldn't get better because we couldn't afford it and the insurance company wouldn't cover it. It was really hopeless. You know, I felt like I, wouldn't, I was going to stay like that forever. I was just going to die. But in her darkest hour, when her treatment wasn't blessed by the medical powers, Julia says a higher one came to her rescue. Invited to meet Pope Francis during his trip to New York in 2015. She says this moment, aired live on News 4, changed everything. He's going to give me a miracle. He came over and touched me, and I you know, was asking for a miracle, and I didn't get up and walk. I was all over the news. The coverage triggered an outpouring of help and led her to Dr. Horowitz, who cleared a spot in his years-long waiting list. In Julia's case, because the nerves have been severely affected for her lower extremities, it's going to take a while. It can take years for the nerves to regrow. My sense is with good physical therapy, she will be able to start to walk. 
I dream of Julia walking. You know, I, I, um, I envision her standing and, you know, posing for a picture. Julia has faith and incredibly even bigger dreams. I think everything happens for a reason. And, you know, I think God gave me this, this thing and now I have to use it. You know, now I see like what my mission is to do, you know, to help other people. There's such a controversy with Lyme disease and so many people suffer in silence, you know, that don't deserve it. 